my name's Steve Whitfield, uh, I'm on the River Don at Sprotbra. I'm going to be doing uh, some Bolognese efficiency today, something a bit different. The river level's a bit high, uh, the river level this morning when I looked was 0.93. It's on the A River Levels uh, data station this morning, uh, I'd like it to be about 0.9. It might be a bit pacey but I think we'll get away with it. I've set two uh, Bolognese rods up, I've got a 7 metre uh, continental rod and I've got one of the 6 metre UK uh, models with the double rings on. And I've also got a slider rod set up on a 15 foot cadence. Uh, I think we're going to catch a few fish. It, it, it's been wet this morning and we might get a little bit of rain come into the river. But I'm hoping we're going to catch a few fish for the camera. So. We've got a cadence 15 foot number one uh, float rod here. Uh, paired up with a CS10 4000. Uh, I've got a slider set up on this. I'm hoping that the pace isn't going to be too much. The advantage of fishing the slider is I can put that right across on the other side uh, and that's usually a good method for catching skimmers especially if you started the match on the feeder and maybe you get a couple of fish on the feeder you can throw the slider across it and you can usually pinch a couple more fish. Uh, second one I've got set up is I've got a 7 metre Shimano Ultegra. It's, a it's, it's one of the continental models, there's not many rings on this. The, uh, the problem with these is in the, in the UK where we, we, we we suffer a lot of wet weather. The line can stick to these rods. However, uh, the, the, it's slightly lighter than the uh, the double ringer rods, uh, so there's an advantage there. But but on the day, they're a great rod. Right, the third rod, what I've got set up is uh, a six metre uh, Ultegra again. But but this model, it's one of the Continental models. Uh, sorry, it's one of the UK models. These have got double rings. They've got intermediate rings between between the rings on the telescopic sections. Uh, this helps massively when it's wet like this because what it does it stops your line sticking to the uh, to the blank and, and hindering presentation, dragging your float etc. But again the great rod's perfect for this type of fishing. Right a little tip for you here, if you've, if you've got a rod that hasn't got uh, the hook to retain your your hook uh, rather than having it uh, right up here on, on, the, on, the, on the first runner where you can't actually reach it all of the time just put a little loom band there on the reel Hook on there, quick tip, saves loads of time, far better than attaching it to your runner which is over a metre away from your uh, from your reel. Right, these are the floats what uh, we use on the River Don. Uh, I've got a 5 gram there, I think that's a Steve Mayer Bolo Finesse. Because there's not much pace on the river, uh, the slimmer floats work a lot better. If presentation ain't quite right, I like to use a 6 gram. That's a Dave Arrell uh, standard Bolo, but it's called the number one now. Uh, another great float for the River Don, all the sizes, but what I have found a lot of the time when you've got that surface skim or you've got a, got a breeze what's blowing across, the bigger float actually works better. So if that, if that ain't right, I'll be putting that one on, it's all ready to go on the rig. Right you are, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to explain to you a bit about the bait you're going to need on the River Don. I've got a pint and a half of red maggots with a few bronze in, I've also got a pint of casters, I've got a couple of bags of ground bait, uh, I've also got some hemp. Uh, the reason I'm putting some, I'm, I'm doing a mix of ground bait today is uh, there could be some days to catch and, and the mix I'm using, it, it's uh, bag and match bait, it's a special blend, it's a nice, uh, it's a crummy mix, it's, 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 it's pretty much made up of white crumb, brown crumb and biscuit crumb with the niceties, there's the bits of polenta in there and hemp etc but it's a fantastic day ground bait and that's why I've got this and it's because, of the, because it contains some white crumb as well it's nice and easy, it's one squeeze and it's in, it's lovely. Uh, the hemp is straight out of the bag, it's not hemp you'd be fishing with uh, on the hook but it's perfect for feeding, nice and small, nice to introduce into ground bait. Right, the ground bait, uh, when you're mixing a, a crumb based ground bait, it's important that you don't put too more, much water in at once. What you've got to do is introduce it little and often. It usually takes two or three mixes to get it, two or three additions of water to get it right. 
Uh, not too much to start with, uh, and, and having a whisk is, is dead handy. with that now I'll just leave it to settle a while I'll get some more gear down to my peg ready to fish and when I come back to that another little uh, a little mix and, I, and it should be perfect right ground bait has been left to uh, stand for 20 minutes I've come back I've just had a little bit more water to it it's just about right now it might need another drink in a bit but it's just about right that a nice squeeze you've got a nice sausage there that'll take plenty of particles and put some hemp in there and some casters be perfect especially if some days turn up yeah, I know this river and I know this peg's about 15 foot deep uh, on, a normal, on a normal level but what we've got now, we've got a little bit of water in it like I said before uh, so I've just checked the depth it's very hard to plumb up correctly I'll run the float through a good tip for you is always start on a light up length if you're not sure about a peg it's very difficult to plumb up in 15, 16 foot of water even with a long rod uh, but a good uh, tip is use like an 09 up length something you can easily break off have three or four runs down with that. If it's clean, you can change up to a 010 or 011 or 12, whatever you feel feel necessary. But what you don't want to be doing is starting on an heavy up length, hook up on the bottom, and then lose half the rig. Bait's going to be simple. A couple of red maggots. Bronze mines have been better today, to be fair, because there's a bit of colour in the water, but I don't think it makes too much difference. I think if you're feeding red maggots, delete red maggots got casters as well I'll try a caster I'll keep I'll keep feeding the caster the two just a bit shorter there another thing what's important when using these long rods is not to keep dipping them in the water the last thing you want is to have a, have, have a wet rod and then your line sticking to the water. It just hinders your presentation. Uh, when you're fishing a long rod like this, there's no need to hold it like a stick float rod or a waggler rod either. Stick it into your stomach there, use that as, a, as an anchor point, like a fulcrum to, to use and strike against. As you can see there, there is quite a lot of pace on there, but let's see what we can do. First fish of day. Well, I've had a few throw, uh, a few casts with uh, with the five gram, and there's a bit too much pace on the river, really. Uh, I've picked the uh, the six gram up. It's actually a six gram float. What I took the uh, alloy stem out of and put a carbon stem in, so it's about six and a half gram. And I'm using the longer rod. The wind's a bit difficult as well. But we've had a fish. We've had two bites. So we can get a few more fish for you. I'm just loose feeding maggots slightly up my peg. Uh, one thing you can get on the river don is you can start getting bites right under your feed but because the conditions are a little bit different today I don't think that's going to happen. The, both bites I've had have been right down the peg uh, and if I continue to get uh, get bites down the peg I'll actually start casting down the peg. I'll not change the, I'll not change the feeding regime but I'll, I'll change when I'm casting. There's no point chucking chucking a float up out in front of me and then running it all the way down there to get a bite. Now you've got to be efficient when you're doing this to catch more fish. Just getting down into the area now we've had the last two bites. So there we go, bang on cue. Oof. Bump that one. Bits alright. As you can see, it's quite pacey. It's very unusual this for the river dock. Just 
slowing it down a little bit. Which is not something you normally have to do on this river. It's normally a chuck it in and let it go down at pace. Add a little bit there. Right, bit of an update. I've been fishing 20 minutes, half an hour. I've had seven fish. Uh, the river is a bit pacey. Like I said, I've had to fish the, the six gram float to make it more presentable. And you keep getting a little bit of a surface skim. But the session's going all right, to be fair. Not pulling no trees up, but we're getting bites. So that's the main thing. What I have noticed is the river keeps picking up pace. Now, over the last few years they've put a couple of uh, like hydroelectric turbines further up the river and I don't know if they influence the, uh, the pace of the river now and again but certainly when they open the lock down at Sprotbra you do get an increase in pace which, which can, when it's, when it's low, can actually uh, give you a few bites. Another bite, small fish. I seem to be getting most of my bites probably a third of the way down the peg. Uh, for anybody who's not, not familiar with this type of fish, it's pointless chucking a float out in front of you when you're getting all your bites down there. You can certainly feed there. But what you want to be doing really is chucking to where you catch a fish. If you're getting bites down there, there ain't no point letting it run all the way down to there to get you the bite. It's all about efficiency. And it ain't been efficient running it all the way down there to get you the bite. So you might as well actually chuck your, chuck your, chuck your floating down there. Still feeding quite heavy. Putting an odd double pound of casters in, and a couple of double pouches of them, and loose feeding a pouch of maggots, more or less every run, run down with the float. Getting down to the area now where I've been getting the bites. Dip again.
like when it's dried up a bit the rivers actually rose a bit from the rain this morning and it started to get really difficult the winds got up as well it's, it's been quite difficult with the wind uh, I've more or less sacked the other two methods the slider and the and the five gram volley and I'm now fishing the six gram exclusively and I'm I'm still catching an odd fish. I've got a little fish now, I think. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but I had to do something to change it. I had a real bad spell where I were like, I'd probably gone 20 minutes, half an hour without a bite. After, after pretty much bagging. So what I've done, I've, I've introduced three balls of ground bait. I've stuck plenty of remping casters in there. And I think we've got a response. So we're starting to catch a few fish again. Uh, I've had some nice stamp roach. I've had some nice stamp roach, but I haven't had a dish yet, so maybe introducing a bit of ground bait might 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 try and spare the dish to one, but I just don't think there's many down here in the river now. If if we, if they had have been, I think we'd have caught a few. It's awful. It's uh, it's changed round completely. I'm still managing just to get behind the float and control it a little bit and, and just get the odd bite, get the get get that little bit of presentation you need just for just for a split second, not all the way through. Every time I mend the line I'll get a little bit of a run through where I get good presentation. And you've got a chance of getting a bite at that point. Just about in the zone where I've been getting the bites. Another little Don Roach we've caught, probably going to be the last fish of the day, very, very enjoyable session. I hope you've picked a few tips up today fishing the bolo. Get out there, it's a great method to use. Conditions haven't been great today, they've been quite testing. It's, uh, it's gone from rain to wind and it's a nice sunny day, so, in fact it's a nice time to end the session so I think we'll leave it at that and we'll have a look at what we've caught. Well, it's been, a, it's been an enjoyable day on the River Don. We've had all the seasons today, we've had rain, we've had wind, the sun's come out at the end of the session. We've had probably eight, maybe nine pound of fish, it's been, been great. Uh, I hope you've picked a few tips up from the fish in the bolo. We're going to put these fish back now. We've had a few, few quality roach like this. Yeah, Danny.